Jayom Vishnu Pad Paramahangsa Pada Project I charge us a tourist at Sri Shiman. It's gonna be BBT founder charge of mine grace AC Bhakti Vedanta Swam Maharaj Prabhupada Kita. Nitya Lila Prabhupada Om Vishnu Pad is a mine grace Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Takur Prabhupada Kita. Ananta Koti Vaisha Vrinda Kita. Nam I charge of Shila Haridas Takur Kita. Prem Sikahosh Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dita Ananda Shri Advaita Gadad Hara Shiva Siddhi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Kita. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopa Nath Shama Kunda. Radha Kunda, Gira Govardhan Ki Jai. Shri Bhaja Bhumi Nama Nam Ki Jai. Shri Nama Deep Mai Pura Dham Ki Jai. Shri Nila Chal Jagannath Pura Dham Ki Jai. Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Jamuna Mai Ki Jai. Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Shri Bhakti Tosi Maharani Ki Jai. Your most beautiful worship, Shri Shukmini Dwarka Dish Ki Jai. Shri Shukmini Dwarka Nath Ki Jai. Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai. Samabeta Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. Going back to home, back to Godhead Ki Jai. Iskon Los Angeles Yatra Kijai, Brihad Madanga Transcendental Book Distribution Kijai, International Food for Life Transcendental Prasadam Distribution Kijai, Sri Hari Nam Sankirtan Kijai, Nitai Go Premanani, Hari Hari Bo. All glories to the Sama devotees, all glories to the Sama devotees, all glories to the Sama devotees, all glories, all glories to Shishi Guru and Goranga, Glory Shila Prabhupada. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Deming Sarasatim Vyasam Tatojaya Mutirayat Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, let us offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of God and Lord Narayan, unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. Unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, who is a translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashta Prayeshu Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki By regularly attending the Srimad Bhagavatam class and by rendering service unto the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving devotional service unto the personality of God at whose worship with transcendental songs becomes established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So uh, our screen is not functioning properly. This screen just is history is 10 years old. Um, 10 years ago, we paid almost $10,000 for it. It's an 85 inch screen. Now you can get the same screen for about $1,500, $1,600. So if anybody wants to. <laughs> Make a nice donation to the temple to buy us a new screen. Please do so. Don't hesitate. We need it. <laughs> Hare Krishna. I'm going to try one more time, maybe with all well wishes, everybody wishing hard. Maybe it'll work so you can see. But otherwise, we'll just have to proceed. Okay, fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. As you can see, we try to connect wirelessly, which is what I'm doing now, and that doesn't work. We try to connect with a wire, that's not working, because there's one small component in the thing that's gone bad, and it just, it's intermittent. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But when it doesn't, it's really not good. Yeah, it's not even mirroring now. We'll just have to forget about it. Okay, so those of you who have your phones or books or whatever you can chant, others, please be patient. So we're in the third canto, chapter 9, text 13. No, as I said, we tried both ways, wirelessly and wired, and neither way is working right now. All right, so if you have a book or your phone, you can chant along. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Pung samato vipida karma vir advarajayar. Pung 
Dane na chogra tapasa paricharya yacha. Aradanang Bhagavatas Tabasat Kriyarto Dharmor Pitak Karhichid Mriyate Nayatra Okay, that's only one person? Okay. <laughs> Alright, we'll just go on to the synonyms and the translation. Pungsam of the people Ataha Therefore, <clears throat> vividha, karma bihi, by various fruits of activities, advara, ajayi, by performance of Vedic rituals, danena, by charities, ch, and ugra, very hard. Tapasa, austerity. Paricharyaya, by transcendental service. Ch, also. Aradhanam, worship. Bhagavataha, of the personality of Godhead. Tava, your. Satkriya Artaha. Simply for pleasing your lordship. Dharmaha, religion. Arpitaha, so offered. Karhichit, at any time. Mriyate, vanquishes. Na, never. Yatra, there. Shall proper translation for this verse. But the pious activities of the people, such as performance of Vedic rituals, charity, austere penances, and transcendental service, performed with a view to worship you and satisfy you by offering you the fruit of results, are also beneficial. Such acts of religion <clears throat> never go in vain. Shila Prophet's purport. Which I just lost. Absolute devotional service conducted in nine different spiritual activities hearing, chanting, remembering, worshiping, praying, and so on does not always appeal to people with a pompous nature. They are more attracted by the Vedic superficial rituals and other costly performances of social religious shows. But the process, according to the Vedic injunctions, is that the fruits of all pious activities should be offered to the Supreme Lord. In Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, text 27, the Lord demands that whatever one may do in one's daily activities, such as worship, sacrifice, and offering charity, all the results should be offered to him only. This offering of the results of pious acts unto the Supreme Lord is a sign of devotional service to the Lord and is of permanent value, whereas enjoying the same results for oneself is only temporary. Anything done on account of the Lord is a permanent asset and accumulates in the form of unseen piety for gradual promotion to the unalloyed devotional service of the Lord. These undetected pious activities will one day result in full-fledged devotional service by the grace of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, any pious act done on account of the Supreme Lord is also recommended here for those who are not pure devotees. Namaste. Saraswate Deve Goramani Pacharine, never say Shunyavani, Pascha Chede Starne. O Magiana Timurandas Yagiana Jana Shalakaya, Chakshur Unvilitam Jaina, Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha, Shri Chaitanya Manobi Shang, Stapi Tang Jaina Butale, Swayam Rupa Kadamayam, the Dati Sopadan to come. Bandeya Hung Shri Guru, Shri Yutapada Kamalam, Shri Guru and Baisha Vangsha, 
Shri Rupam Sagadatam Sahagana Ragana Tanvatam Tang Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Purjana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vatangsha Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namosate Tapta Kancha Nagorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpaturubhya Sha Kripa Sindhubi Evacha Patitanang Pavane Pyo Vaishnabe Pyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dittananda Shri Advaita Gadad Hare Shivasati Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So being inspired by the Lord Lord Bhama here is telling the Lord but actually telling us what we should do to make progress in life. If one does not know what is the goal of life, how can make one make progress towards that goal? So at this point we drove home very, I wouldn't say heavily, but directly. Yesterday we spoke at Loyola High School downtown, myself and the other members of the New Dorka A team, academic team, Narantara Prabhu and uh, Sham Mukund Prabhu and Rukmini Rajani uh, Mataji. So it's an all boys school, so less distraction. That was the norm when I went to school. You had all boys and all girls school. Nowadays, they're trying to put an end to that. It's one of the last ones left in California, practically, in LA for sure. But there is agitation to make it co ed. Why should it be all boys? Make it a co ed school. So usually, I ask the boys, why would they have an all boys school? And they all get it. They say, because if there were girls here, we'd be more distracted. <laughs> so if you really want your children to be edu educated nicely, separating them early in life is beneficial. It's not an you know, act of putting one side down or the other side down. Or, no. Separating children by sex early in life is beneficial for them. They learn better. They're not as distracted. All the boys get it when you ask them. Why, 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 why should there be all boys schools? Because I, I, they know themselves I would be distracted if there were girls here. So they tend to be sharper. That's my experience. When you go to a school that's segregated by sex, the children tend to be sharper because they're more focused <laughs> on their education. So anyway, so we told the boys yesterday that if you want to achieve the goal in life, you have to know what that goal is. You have to know what that goal is. We are here speaking about comparative religion. In the Christian tradition, they're Catholic, what is the goal? So Naranta informed them that the topmost goal that's mentioned in the Bible, in the, through the uh, life and teachings of Jesus Christ, is when that centurion asked Jesus Christ, my Lord, what is the best thing that I can do? And he told him, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Not that I love God, I love God, and then I want to kill everybody else. <laughs> you, know, kind of, you know, that's not acceptable. Because if God is the Father, which is accepted in every bona fide religious tradition, God is the Supreme Father, that means we're all his children. And from the Vedic viewpoint, not just all the humans are children of God, but all living entities, the cats, the dogs, the birds, the trees, the lizards, the snakes. As I mentioned before, it's interesting that in Tibetan Buddhist culture, they're so focused on this point. It's apparently, when they build a house, they, you, know, you have to dig a foundation. So every single worm that they disturb, they take it out, keep it on the side, and they transfer it somewhere else. They're very careful not to kill even one earthworm while they're digging. Because they understand, earthworms are essential. Why do they exist? They irrigate the soil. They keep the soil fertile. They have a purpose in life. You may not know what that purpose is. You may think, ah, this is a useless worm. But it's an essential part of God's creation so that the whole planet functions properly. So they're very diligent like that. They take the worm, put it somewhere else. But then... They're nominally vegetarian. Nominally. They generally don't eat meat. But if they go somewhere else, like across the border in India where meat is available, then they eat it. See, in their own culture, they won't kill the animal and eat it. But if they go somewhere 
where meat is available, somebody cooks meat and eat, offers it to them, they will eat it. So that means not a clear understanding. It's not the real spiritual understanding, as we told those boys yesterday, we were talking about the different species of life, that every single species of life, because we explained to them the four regular principles, why we don't eat meat, fish, and eggs. Every species of life has the right to live a natural life and die a natural death. You, we don't want our lives interrupted. Somebody deciding that now it's time for you to go, I'm going to kill you. Somebody please open the doors, let get some cross flow of air. We're still not out of COVID. And in general, it's just a good idea to have the doors open. So open that side door, please, and open this side door. And if there's anybody upstairs, make sure all the windows are open. So every animal, every soul, as we tell them, we think that we're a body and we have a soul inside. But it's no, we are the soul and the body is formed around us. So we take the changing bodies. I printed out a big one so they can see it clearly from anywhere in the room. When we show them, this is what happens. The soul is put into a baby's body and that body constantly transforms. And generally by the time you're age four or five, I remember, I can remember as far back as five clearly, you, become, you establish yourself. You become very self-aware. In the beginning, it's just, as we learn from the scriptures, anamoy. You just want to be fed. You're only happy when you're fed. So the baby's always crying, feed me, feed me, ah, and the mother has to feed. So that's the beginning. But gradually, it transforms into pranamoya. You become aware of your existence, and you want to continue existing. You don't want anything to interrupt that. So even a child, why a child? Even an ant, you try to stop it. It's going to try to get away. We become aware of our existence. So we show them that the body is constantly transforming. And then from about five years on, you're conscious of your self as a separate, existing, living entity. And the body keeps transforming, but that self-awareness doesn't change. It's not that I think I'm five years old and then I'm going to stay like that forever. No. <laughs> when the body transforms into a six-year-old body and a 16-year-old body, which is what most of them were, those boys are like 16, 17, this particular class, you are still self-aware. You're not thinking that, or if you're a little bit progressive, you're not thinking that now I'm a 16-year-old body. But this is what people taught. You were a 6-year-old body and now you're a 16-year-old body. But no, the body is always changing. Which body are you? It just keeps changing moment to moment, year to year. It keeps changing. You're not that body. So here Lord Brahma is instructing, if you are actually self-aware, then you should want to know what am I supposed to do with myself? And again, I've said many times, I, I remember clearly when that hit me. I, we, my family was still living in Jamaica at the time. I was about five or six years old. And in 19, this would, would have been about 1957. At that time, very little light pollution at night. All lights are practically off in the city. We were living in the big city, Kingston. That was the big city in Jamaica. Still is. So on a dark moon night, you can really see the universe. You can see what's out there. You can see all the galaxies and stars. And I remember looking up and wondering, OMG, what am I? Who am, I'm just like nothing compared to what's existing out there. Who am I really? What am I supposed to do with my life? And that really hit me as a child. And that's what we're supposed to do. Any so-called human being who doesn't come to this point of wondering, who am I? Why am I here? What am I supposed to do with my life? Is considered to be an animal. Actually, according to the Vedic viewpoint, if you're not classified into Varna and Ashram, then you're not a human. That classification has to be there. Everybody fits into one of the four Varnas and one of the four Ashrams. Then you actually have a human form of life. So again, these boys, they were very intelligent, asked very good questions. They participated very eagerly in the chanting we made a little video. I'll put it on my Facebook page sometime in the future. And they really, really were attracted to the prasadam. And this is proper. This is not something that we came up with. Prophet told us preaching to schools, especially colleges, is very, very important. He said our future leaders of our society will come from that class. And he said you must give them nice prasadam because they may or may not remember whatever philosophy you give them, but they will remember. These Hare Krishna people gave us some nice prasadam, nice cookie especially we like to bring. So yesterday it was Rukmini Raj and he made some cookies and they really appreciated that. 
So Lord Brahma is instructing us what to do, how to think. And Prophet, in the beginning of his purport, is talking about the nine processes of devotional service. So that we get from the seventh canto, Prahlad Maharaj. This was the, his response to his demoniac father, Hiranyakashipu, when he asked him, what's the best thing that you've learned in school? And remember, he was only five at that point. So he answered him boldly, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, Smaranam Padasavanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanavedanam. These nine processes of devotional service, that's what I learned. And not only that, then he said, Iti Pung Sarpata Vishnu, Bhaktis Ten Navalakshana, Creator, Bhagavad Gita, Tanman Yedita Uttamam. He says, if you are so fortunate that you can practice all nine of these, you're topmost. But if you can only even practice one of them, then I consider you to be the most intelligent person. So do we want to be intelligent? If we want to be intelligent, we should apply ourselves to one or all of these nine processes of devotional service, beginning with Shravanam. So the Shravanam is not something that we do once and then stop. Or No, it should go on constantly. Constantly. Um, not to the point where you can't interact with each other. Some devotees, they like to walk around with headphones all the time. And you say, hurry up all, they don't even hear you because they're, they've got some devotional music blasting in there. Not like that. You should still be able to interact. But the point is, we should be eager to hear. Because no matter how much we think we know, there is so much more that we don't know. Like today's purport, proper references, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, text 27. That is such an important verse. And the purport is so potent. I'm just going to read the first line of that purport. Prophet, in just one line, grabs. And if you can, read the rest of it today. This will be your homework for today. So, you know, you know that verse, so that verse, uh, translation, Krishna says, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, and whatever austerities you perform, do that, O son of Kunti, as an offering to me. Now, Prophet, very first line of his purport. You can meditate on this all day. Thus, it is the duty of everyone to mold his life in such a way that he will not forget Krishna in any circumstance. Bas. That is the goal of life. Mold your life in such a way that you won't forget Krishna in any circumstance. He doesn't say you can't have a profession. Doctor, lawyer, prime minister, like now the first Hindu prime minister of the United Kingdom, Rishi Sunak, <clears throat> has been installed as the first Hindu prime minister of the United Kingdom, UK. <clears throat> so now it's his duty to be the prime minister and as far as possible lead the citizens in the proper prosecution of human form of life. There's a chance that he will do that because he does have contact with ISKCON, Prophet's movement for re-spiritualizing the whole world. I just, somebody sent me a video yesterday of him. Right after he was, you know, given the title, he went to the manor. And there's a video of him interacting with a sannyasi there. And his whole family was with him. And so obviously he has some sentiment towards real spiritual knowledge. Otherwise, why, why go to ISKCON? Why go to an ISKCON temple? That's what ISKCON temples are created for. Prophet says, primarily to give the public a chance to come and hear genuine spiritual knowledge. Because there are so many people out there who will tell you that they can give you spiritual knowledge. But can they actually? And uh, you have to test them. What is your connection? Where did you get the knowledge from? Otherwise, you can be cheated so easily. There's, uh, when I was in England, this was probably 2012, if I remember correctly. Wherever I go, I like to ask devotees how they became devotees. So there was this one young uh, Indian boy, compared to me, boy. He was a young man, maybe 20, 21. So I asked him, how did you come? Was, the, was your family? He said, no, I'm, you know, I, my, my family, they were nominally Hindus, but they never could answer any of my questions. So he said, finally, my mother told me, you go to such and such mandir, such and such temple, and ask the pundit there your questions. She said, I can't answer your questions. So he went there. And uh, the pundit was performing some puja. So he said, wait, when I'm finishing my puja, you can ask anything. So he waited. 
And he said the first thing the guy did, so-called pundit, when he came out of the temple to answer his questions, he lit a cigarette. <laughs> so he said, I realize this guy's not going to be, if you can't even, if you're not even smart enough to guard your own health, in other words, you're so foolish, you're smoking, trying to get some pleasure, then what answers are you going to give to anybody about what to do in life, how to live life? So he realized this guy's bogus, he's not a pundit. Fortunately, he came across devotees, he got a book, and he started going to Bhaktivedanta Manor. So this is why Prabhupada has established his International Society for Krishna Consciousness, so we can mold our lives in such a way that we don't forget Krishna under any circumstance. It's not so easy. It's not so easy. It has been made easy by this chanting process. And today's disappearance of Vasudev Ghosh, he and his brothers were renowned for their kirtan. They were excellent kirtaniyas. So this kirtan process, this chanting congregationally, and the japa process also, chanting your rounds. Actually, I think at the end of this purport, if I remember correctly, Prabhupada mentioned something about that. One second, let me just see if I can find that. Yes, Prophet says. Nowadays, people are very much inclined to the meditational process, which is not practical in this age. But if anyone practices meditating on Krishna 24 hours a day by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra around his beads, Prophet mentioned specifically, he is surely the greatest meditator and the greatest yogi. So this is it. Life has been made very simple for all of us. Get yourself a bead bag, get yourself 108 beads on a string, and chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This process will take us back to home, back to God. It will give us the, the spiritual credit by which we can meditate on Krishna, focus on Krishna 24 hours a day. But again, it's not easy. We have to be serious. We have to be very serious. Um, the goal is to remember Krishna at the last moment, but that last moment can come at any time. Another time I was in Zurich, Switzerland, and I asked one devotee, actually, no, I gave a class mentioning this point of trying to remember Krishna at the end of life. So after the class, he said, you know, Prabhu, can I tell you something? I said, sure, I didn't really, I didn't know him previously, so he came very respectfully. He said, you know, what you were mentioning about remembering Krishna at the last moment, he said, not so long ago, he was a Sankirtan devotee. He was in a car with another Sankirtan devotee. They were traveling, and somewhere or other, they had an accident, very bad accident. And he said, at that moment when I thought I was going to die, he said, I didn't say Hare Krishna. I said something I can't repeat. <laughs> you can just imagine. He said, oh, something bad. So it's not so easy. It's not just because we, you know, get up every day and so-called chant our rounds. You really, really have to want it. Krishna reciprocates with our desire. So we really have to have an unshakable, deep-rooted desire to come back to the point of pure devotion to Krishna. In any of those nine processes, or all of them, we have to come back to this point of pure devotion to Krishna. So today, uh, actually, Maharaj's birthday was yesterday. Amala Bhakta Swami is 90 years old at, at this point. And so this morning, 9 <laughs> zero, but you act like 19. <laughs> so this morning there will be a special breakfast to honor Maharaj. Everybody should please go to the Prasadam Hall right now. Grantaraj Shriman Bhagavatam Kijai, Srila Prabhupada Kijai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Kijai. Hare Krishna.